Bashar al-Assad, the Syrian president at the Arab League summit in Saudi Arabia. This is uh, the moment he's been waiting for. And I think the moment that a lot of the uh, a lot of others who attended were dreading, because although they accepted Syria back into the Arab League, you know, Bashar al-Assad is sitting in a room full of people who tried to kill him, right? All, a lot of these countries, Saudi Arabia, the host, um, uh, you know, Qatar, who's still not on speaking terms, they, they all tried to oust him and they failed. And now they, they have to bite their tongues, um, swallow their pride uh, and, you know, put on a smiley face. So here's Bashar al-Assad arriving in, in Jeddah in, in Saudi Arabia. A couple of po uh, photos posted here. They rolled out the carpet for him. You know, Biden was treated so badly when he visited that I, I'm, I'm struggling to remember whether they even gave him a carpet. There must, there must have been a carpet, right? Maybe, maybe a bad one or something. But <laughs> Biden, Biden was treated like, you know, that was on purpose. They did that on purpose. So here he is arriving. They, you know, they're greeting him like, like any other leader or president, you know, Arab representative coming. No difference, right? Here's uh, the, um, the Syrian foreign minister. Also, you know, the kisses and hugs and everything backstage. I mean, it's really funny, and I and I, I I'm not saying it's bad or something. Not at all. It's it's good, you know, that that Arab League um, is happening with Syria, and they've taken Syria back, and, and and so on. But who changed their position? Syria never changes position. Bashar al-Assad, you know, is still the president. So it really makes you wonder who is wrong here. Here they are introducing him. <laughs> This is the other day welcoming the um, Syrian foreign minister back into the Arab League officially. Al Aziz Al Sadiq Faisal Al Maqdad, Wazir Kharigiyat Al Jamhuriyat Al Arabiyat Al Suriya. Wa atamanna an takun istaadat Suriya li maqadha muqaddima li inha azmatha. So that was uh, uh, the other day. Now here, let's get to the speech. So you, you, well, let's talk about the speech. Th this is Bashar al-Assad. He's coming in. And it's a great big hall, right? And so you've got all the um, uh, members of the Arab League uh, at this summit. We and have been talking about as African leaders because... And, you know, they had, for, for a long that time... In that part of the for a long time, they were uh, mulling whether to, to accept Syria and have him back. So... Here's Bashar al-Assad. He, I'll let him speak, let the interpreter do his thing, and then I'll come in. There are struggles. The headlines are many, and this message is not sufficient, or this, nor is this summit. We cannot forget the uh, usurped rights of the Palestinian people or the expansionist ideology of, of Ottomans and the here comes when he's saying the ottomans obviously he's talking about turkey um and you know turkey's occupying a big chunk of syria uh, a lot of uh what was armenia um i mean what what you know should be armenia but uh, was given to to turkey a lot of syria was given to turkey by you know european colonizers so he's talking about that right taking a jab at turkey even though turkey is trying to fix things you know erdogan is is saying he who <laughs> is a not, he's not obviously turkey is not an arab nation but but turkey's yet another country that's suddenly having to do a u turn and you know swallow their pride and bite their tongues and he's, you know, uh, gone from I want to kill you and get rid of you all the way to oh let's be, let's make peace, you know, let, let, we need to reconcile. <laughs> the role of the League of Arab States as the natural platform for discussing various issues and providing remedies on the condition that its mechanism is redeveloped by revisiting the internal 
bylaws in order to cope up with the recent developments. The joint Arab actions requires joint strategies and visions that can be translated into practical policies, uniform policies, fix mechanisms, and clear tools. By that time, we will be ahead of time, and we will have a haven to resort to against any aggressions. And so he, he's basically saying that uh, this, this whole organization needs to do what it was originally uh, formed to do, which is to, um, you know, uh, be self-sufficient, to be able to rely on one another. And, and he, he's, he's basically saying without having foreign actors, Turkey, the United States, uh, Israel, uh, the EU, whoever it is, interfering. Okay, so that, that that's what that's the message that he's sending. He's saying you all need to get your act together, and we need to actually fix this institution. He's not just saying, "Oh, thank you for taking me back." He doesn't actually make any mention of that. You know, he he uh, he, uh, he certainly alludes to it and serious importance. And we'll get to that in a second, though. As to the daily crisis from Libya to Syria, Yemen to Sudan, and many others in different areas. We cannot cure diseases by attending to symptoms. This guy's a doctor, so he's speaking like one, right? He's, he's literally a doctor. <laughs> All these crises are the offspring or previous issues that remained unresolved. Speaking of some requires us to address the cracks that has hit the Arab landscape and the League of Arab States should resume its role as the curer of all ailment. Above all, leave the domestic affairs to our respective people or what we have to do. <laughs> Assad gets his pound of flesh. Assad gets his pound of flesh. So he, he's come there and he's sitting face to face with all these people who tried to kill him and he's saying, stay out of my country and mind your own damn business we need to help we need to work together but we don't get involved in each other's domestic politics <laughs> so it's it's really funny you know it's like what what a flop i mean uh there never was an arab spring in syria right i mean I'm, there's def there's definitely always been a movement but you know for for whatever reason well, I can tell you the reasons. It's, it's very neo-colonial. But, you know, it was hijacked, right? So, so whatever peaceful, democratic, re re you know, uh, reform uh, that, that, you know, was going on in Syria, it turned into very, very, very nasty groups and funded by the countries uh, in this very room, you know, by the leaders in this very room. And now he's telling them, mind your own business. We're not going to get along if we don't mind our own business and, and, and you know, we, if, we, if we don't stop meddling in each other's domestic affairs. Is to prevent any foreign forces from intervening. With respect to Syria, its history, present and present remains within the Arab umbrella. Mm -hmm. We belong to the Arab region and we cannot forget however we cannot change our identity he underscores you know syria's cultural historical uh importance as you know really the the center of arabism the whole the whole thing right so you you, uh, you know you have umayyad mosque which is you could say third or fourth um most important holy site in 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 islam and you have of course you know uh um uh syria has so much history in in all of the three you know ma the the big three um you know monotheistic religions and and of course in arabism right so he 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 says the uh the um uh the phrase in a second right the one that i've told you many times Syria has always been the heart of Arabism and Arab nationality. Ladies and gentlemen, as we hold this summit in unstable global landscape, 
Syria remains in the heart of the Arab region, which is crowned by this sum summit, which I hope will pave the way for a new journey of joint Arab action, harmony, peace, prosperity and welfare rather than destruction and war. And within the five minutes allocated to me, I extend all thanks and appreciation to the heads of delegation who expressed their passion to the return of Syria, and I reciprocate. And I also thank the custodian of the two holy mosques for the efforts exerted by him for the sake of reconciliation within our region, and I wish Right, right. So, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. He, he, he came there and he got his power to flesh. You know, he, he really gave it to them. I mean, even if he had said uh, literally nothing, the fact that he is there, uh, uh, you know, I, I can bet you that that um, a lot of them wish they weren't in the room. Not because they, they necessarily dislike him, but just of how foolish he's made them look. It's like utter clowns. I mean, when I when I say he's sitting in a in a room full of people who tried to kill him. I, I mean that quite literally, in every sense of the word. And it, it, the, the thing is, it's not about, oh, well, poor, poor him. Uh, this guy's, you know, he, he, he's, uh, he's the, the, the head of the state, you know? He's, uh, um, he represents the Syrian people, whether, whether others like it or not. And they turn the whole country upside down. That's the, 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 the worst part of it. And I'm sure he would agree with me that, you know, it's not, oh, they tried to kill me, which is the worst part, or the attempts on his life, which are the worst part. It's, it's the, the entire country that was turned upside down. So, you know, in, in one sense, it's kind of funny, but it's very, very sad. You know, we could have skipped all of this. We could have skipped that entire chapter, left Syria alone, and, and just come to the same conclusion. You know, it's, it's really sad that some people don't get this. Um, <laughs> a lot of people are, are, are mad about this. So I, I, I wanted to show you this kind of transitioning into what, what the hell Zelensky is doing there. Um, so here are some headlines from the past week. This is Jerusalem Post. They're saying Syria's Assad to steal spotlight at Arab summit after years in the cold. Right? So... Uh, they go into various critiques about, oh, the, they, they shouldn't rehabilitate him and this and that, you know. And then here on Newsweek, they had, Biden loses his biggest Syria battle yet. Um, well, you, no, one, no one made you play the game, you know. But anyway, uh, they go here into a rant about how Biden's strategy in Syria, you know, is being shot to pieces, bone to pieces, because the Arab League have welcomed Bashar al-Assad back. Oh no, the travesty. Um, <laughs> the, here's another one. The UAE invited Bashar al-Assad to COP28, right? So this, this climate summit. And this is the first time that you're going to see Bashar al-Assad in, in the same room as not just other Arab leaders, but, uh, you know, inter international leaders. So I'm talking about, like, for example, the British prime minister, Right. That's so awkward for them. They have to go. I, I, I can't imagine them boycotting it because of him. Maybe, maybe, but I, I think it, it would just draw so much attention to the fact that he is there. And that sucks for them. They don't want people to notice him or, or you know, as, they, as they're saying in the Jerusalem Post, steal the spotlight. So they're, I think they're, they're going to go and it's just going to be so awkward for them. You know, the way these, these Western politicians are just, you know, throwing the toys out of the pram and it, it's amazing, you know. Um, here in the Guardian say Syria's Assad to attend Arab League summit as West opposes rehabilitation and um, you know the German foreign minister uh, who uh, uh, Pepe you know eloquently described as unfit to run a um, a bratwurst or, or a Würstelstand is uh, you know moaning and whining about um Assad cannot be normalized unconditionally, you know, like, like she, like she's the ruler of Syria and the head of the Arab League. We must put condition, we must put conditions on the normalizations, yeah? Okay, everybody, hello Ursula, wie geht's dir? <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. She says here, every step towards Assad should be made dependent on concrete concessions. Says who? I mean, again, you're looking like an absolute clown. You know, I, I don't recall her having any role with um, 
supporting the war and and you know during its entire duration i suppose now de facto she does because she's she, you know keep it she's continuing uh, the EU and Germany's efforts to kind of isolate Syria. But my point is that she could have just shut up about it and, you know, basically, again, bit her tongue. But now she has to come out and look like an idiot. Look, man, I, I, I'll tell you one thing. The fact that UAE invited Syria to COP28 uh, and um, that uh, Syria was at the Arab League, um, uh, re so not just re readmitted or um uh you know reaccepted in the arab league itself but also at the summit uh today and that bashar al-assad was was one of the first to speak i mean it, it does speak volumes and the west they can't they can't do anything about it they're really really mad they're really really mad about this this is another episode of um I, you notice how they say things like, oh, uh, Libya was a failure or Afghanistan was like a foreign policy um, a blunder or something. They, like as if they, they didn't know what they were doing. No, they know exactly what they're doing. But it's, it's, this is a very potent example of, of A, why the West and their allies in the region, um, you know, they're, they shouldn't meddle in other countries. And two, you know, it's a masterclass in, in, um, in uh, Bashar al-Assad kind of just sliding back in there and making them all look like fools. He, he made them all look like fools and they, have, they, can't, they can't do a thing about it. And just as the Arab League are slowly, um, well, not slowly, but, you know, fully, I wouldn't say normalizing ties like they say. It's a rapprochement. It's more of a rapprochement. With, with Syria, the rest of the world will follow suit. It's just, it's, it's in the cards. And that's why uh, Mrs. Baerbock is, uh, you know, also throwing the toys out of the pram.